Hello and welcome to Econocent's Hugging Face Fine Tuning Tutorial. Today we are going to use Hugging Face Library to train our transformer. Transformers are a kind of neural network based models that are predominantly used in natural language processing, but they can be applied in other things as well. They've had uh, state of the art results on many tasks like text generation, translation, summarization, question answering, and you know many others. So it's uh, very important to know about transformers if you want to work in the field of natural language processing. And the best way to learn is to get your hands dirty and write some code. So I'm just gonna take you through this notebook that I wrote to um, fine tune a hugging face sequence to sequence model, which is a very general and very applicable type of, um, let's say a paradigm of learning that allows us to uh, give a sequence as an output rather than just giving say, you know, one logit or uh, one number out. Um, so sequence to sequence is very generally applicable because it can do things like uh, translation, text summarization, text generation, and so on. So it's very general. It can be used for many different tasks. And we'll learn how you can use this yourself. Okay, so let's just go through these imports. First, we'll run pip install to get the Hugging Face library. Though the library is named Hugging Face, uh, the name that you're going to use in pip and uh, when you import uh, the library itself is going to be transformers. So we're going to first install that because collab, the collab environment or maybe even the home environment that you're using doesn't have this library installed already. So we're going to pip that first. And then from uh, this library, we're going to import a bunch of things. Um, you know, a lot of these are a lot of names, but you just need to understand that, you know, this is some kind of tokenizer. A tokenizer is something that takes uh, a larger text, say a paragraph or a sentence, and then splits them up into tokens, uh, which can be, you know, of your choice. Uh, usually they're at the word level, so they output words. Uh, but, you know, you can have characters or your byte level uh, tokenizers as well. And then we're going to also import some kind of model for learning sequence to sequence. Uh, the LM here stands for language models. And then our data collator, you don't have to worry about it. I'll explain what exactly uh, it is later on. And then um, training arguments and trainer. So these are objects that we'll require for the purpose of training. Uh, we'll learn more about them as we go into this tutorial. We're also going to um, you know, import PyTorch, because though uh, Hugging Face is a li library for learning transformers, but uh, they, they're not independent. They actually use uh, PyTorch, or optionally, you can also use the te uh, TensorFlow backend. But I'm going to be using the PyTorch backend because that seems to be very common. But um, you'll have to do very sm little changes from what I'm going to teach you in order to get it to work for TensorFlow backends as well. It'll generally apply the steps that I'm talking about. We're going to import NumPy as well and the dataset um, class from here. Okay, so these are our imports. Now let's talk about the exact task at hand. So we're going to use the sequence to sequence paradigm, which means that you can take a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, sorry, you can take um, a sequence as an input. So you can give, let's say, a sentence to this model and then you get a sentence or sequence back as an output. So you can think about uh, translation working this way. You could give a sentence in English and you can get a sentence out in French. Uh, you could also do uh, text summarization. You can give a sequence, let's say, you know, an essay or something. You can give that sequence to the model and say the model spits back, say, four sentences summarizing this entire thing. So that's also sequence to sequence. So you can see that this is a very, very uh, general way of um, general uh, paradigm to use for different tasks. And uh, today I'm going to take a rather uh, simple task, but a task that for a long time we thought that neural networks uh, weren't really good at doing. Uh, and that is doing um, math, symbolic mathematics. So in this example, I'm not going to go into all of uh, symbolic mathematics, but we're going to just look at, um, you know, very simple arithmetic operation that is adding two numbers. And in particular, we're going to look at adding two two digit numbers. That's it. We'll just focus on that to keep it simple. But as you can see, you can give this as a sequence. You can give the numbers that you're trying to add as a sequence to the model. And the model will then spit back the, um, 
the tokens that represent the answer as a sequence as well, right? Like if I give you a problem like 10 plus 11, uh, that's a sequence, a string perhaps, right? 10 plus 11, you can give it as a string. And then the output would be 21, which is um, the characters for two and one. So that's a sequence as well. So we're just going to use our sequence to sequence uh, model to teach our uh, to see if transformers can learn to add to two digit numbers. And I've adapted code from Andre Karpathy's um, mini GPT here for the data set. I will be linking to that uh, repo in the description if you want to see how he uses it and uh, and so on. But right now we are just going to take the data set aspect, uh, the, just the addition data set that he's created, uh, modified a little bit so that it works for our problem. Essentially, this class is a, it is a subclass of a data set, which we get from Torch, uh, PyTorch's utils. So all this class does is it gives us one two digit number and then another two digit number and the answer to the problem of adding those two numbers, right? So A is digit one, A, A, so A is the first number, B is the second number, and C is their sum. And then we put it in a string format. So as you can see in this example, three plus 25 is 28, and it just becomes this sequence, three, 25, and 28. And uh, we keep three digits for the answer, because as you know, adding 50 plus 50 gives us 100 and we need three digits to represent that. Okay. And then remember we um, need a tokenizer, right? We need a way to take this string, split it into a bunch of tokens that we can then give as input into the model. And where the tokenizer comes in is over here. So we basically take the the problem that this is what the model is going to see as its inputs so this is the input sequence and this is the output sequence so we're going to take the input sequence we're going to tokenize that and we're going to create a dictionary where we call uh, the x the x sequence input ids and then the label or the answer that we want the model to give us, we're going to tokenize that. And then we're going to call that labels. So you need to have these names right. You need input IDs and labels to be right because that's what Hugging Face is going to look for. So when it's looking for the inputs, it's going to see it under input IDs. And when it's looking for the results, the Y variable or whatever you know we want the model to guess, and we, we call that labels. So we need these to be there. Okay, so this is the data set. You can go over this and try to convince yourself of what's happening here, but essentially it just takes a bunch of numbers, two numbers specifically, two, two digit numbers, adds them, creates a sequence like this, and then tokenizes them and puts them into the appropriate uh, bin, either the input or the labels. Now that we are done with the data set, let's look at the model. We are going to import a pre-trained model. Remember, we are doing fine tuning here. So the idea is that this model is already trained on some other task, but by making some minimal change to its architecture or perhaps even no change to its architecture and learning new weights, we can solve a new task that it was not initially trained on. For example, here, I'm just loading up a model. This model is called T5small. You can look it up. Um, this model was initially trained for summarization. But now I'm going to use it for the purpose of two-digit addition. So it was trained on a completely different task. But now I import it. I make maybe a few changes to its architecture by you know adding some or removing some heads and things like that, uh, or no changes because in sequence to sequence, since the model is already um, 
already outputting a sequence instead of outputting say doing some kind of uh, n class uh, classification where you might have to you know change the head the classification head in order to work on a different classification problem with different number of classes sequence to sequence models are much more are much more general so they can be used on new problems without even changing the architecture a whole lot or at all so i am going to import the t5 small model and when you use a pre trained model it's always good to also get a pre trained tokenizer because the model is trained on the tokens that the original tokenizer is producing so you might not get good performance if the tokenization schemes were very different uh between your um, usage task and um your current task and the original task so i am going to import a pre trained tokenizer and i use the same name to get back the tokenizer that was used with that model and just for uh, you know the purposes of verifying that the tokenizer works on our problem which is you know mostly consists of uh, digits i just pass through a list of um, sequences of digits and see how the tokenizer does on it and clearly we can see that um the tokenizer is doing its job it's not giving me um error or any, anything of that sort so i'm pretty confident that this tokenizer will work uh, for my case okay so now that we've uh, gotten the tokenizers and the model down let's start training and in order to do training we need to give certain arguments to the hugging face trainer and conveniently that class is called seek to seek training arguments in this training arguments let's see what all i've given so first a name just a name so that when it's doing saving um it knows what name to save it under and then it asks me for what kind of evaluation strategy i've given i've given the parameter of epoch which just means that evaluate every epoch so like after training for one epoch tell me how the validation score is learning rate which you know it's how fast you want the model parameters to change and uh batch sizes for training and validating weight decay this is just a penalty on uh, having high weights it's optional save total limit so this is how many number of um, models do you want to save so while it's training how many checkpoints do we want to save and this is you know how many epochs do we want to train for and uh, predict with generate uh, don't worry too much about this but it's just um, you're just saying that you want to use the generate function when you want to uh, predict the sequence uh we can go deeper into that in a different video but basically the the way transformers produce outputs is that we iteratively take the encoder uh state and we produce a, an output out of it so we don't produce the sequence all at once but we kind of iteratively we we produce one word then we kind of uh, take the encoder state and that one word back into the model and then we get the second one uh third one and so on so uh there are a few things that you can change about what happens when you are getting the iterative outputs and generate is that function that helps you do that so we are just saying you know go ahead and use that one push to hub uh, i i'm keeping this false you might want to keep it true but you'll have to log in to hugging face if you want to uh, keep this true but the idea is that once it's trained uh you can have it directly push the model online uh in the hugging face hub so you don't have to uh train this again you can just pull it from the hub next time you want to use this model uh, i don't want to do that because i like to keep my copies locally um but yeah those are all the arguments that we are going to put inside um the training arguments class which will then put into a trainer but before that we also create this thing called a data collator uh this data collator 
basically uh, takes your output, uh, your uh, data set and then puts it into batches. Uh, but also when it does that, it pads the ending of those um, those sequences in a batch to the longest size. Okay, and now we have the trainer. The trainer basically takes in the model that it needs to train, the arguments that we just defined over here, uh, the training data set, the evaluation or validation data set, the data collator that contains uh, that um, will the data collator that is going to run on these data sets before it goes into the model. And of course, the tokenizer that we need to, and the tokenizer that we choose. And then we call the train method on trainer. So uh, this step is going to take a while. So you know, grab a coffee while you're at it. And uh, let's see what the output kind of looks like. So the output is going to look kind of like this, where for every epoch of training, you're going to get a training loss and a validation loss. Um, as you can see, over time, the validation loss comes really, really down. And then you're done training. And then um, basically, the model is done training now. And uh, we can go ahead and see how our model performs. So I just wrote some code to print out uh, some of the answers and labels in the test data set. So this is, what you see on the left is the model's output. What you see on the right is the, is the actual ground truth for that problem. And as you can see, like our model is pretty much accurate, like almost always gets the right answer. Uh, it's not 100% accurate. So I just went over here and I, I got the percentage of uh, the accuracy and it's 95.8, which is very good. If you trained it for a bit longer, maybe it would have gotten that too. Uh, but as, as you can see, it's not exactly 100% um, correct. So it's going to make some mistakes. Let's see if I can uh, find a mistake over here. Uh, they all look kind of good. Okay, here. So our model said 167, but the answer was 168. So as you can see, it still makes some mistakes, but otherwise it seems to have uh, gotten it. And I've added some code to, um, you know, just make a copy. So if you want to just uh, zip this and save it in your Google Drive, I've added some code for that. So you can do that. But essentially you just learned how you can use Hugging Face to um, train a sequence to sequence model. So you can create your own data sets in this. We used a very simple two digit addition problem but you know you could create a completely different data set where you have um, essays and summaries or uh, English and French so you can do translation uh, you can do uh, text generation so you could just have uh, you know the first few sentences uh, in in your um, in the as as the axis and then you can try to predict the sentence that comes after it so you can do text generation that way you can do many things so you can just basically use your imagination uh, to to fit almost any kind of problem to be sequence to sequence uh, yeah so uh, thank you so much for watching this and i hope you guys um, learned something today and as always uh, please send us any questions comments if you want any future tutorials on anything in particular we'd love to hear from you thank you